Hey guys, so today's the day. It's that time again. Another new additions video to my collection. Been about a month or so, I believe, roughly. Close to it. And I'm telling you, the past few weeks have been really good to me. Uh, I've done some uh, antiquing, uh, some picking and stuff. Uh, and I've actually added a lot of good things to my collection. And I'm so excited to share them with you today. Uh, I've actually got a table full of stuff. And it's a, a, a wide variety, I guess you could say, of different things. But... You know, it's always fun when you can go through phases or times when you, it just seems like you just continuously find good things. And, you know, and I've, I've been going through that here the last few months. Uh, most of you guys know the first half of this year wasn't so good for me in the collecting world. Uh, but, again, I got some good items to share with you today. Uh, if you haven't already, um, I did go to the CMP and I picked up three nice rifles. So if you will, watch that video, the unboxing I did. Uh, as well as my experience at the South Store. I think you'll like it. I also made a video on, you know, some information about applying for a Curio and Relics license. So if you're interested in that, want to add more mill search to your uh, your collection, uh, if you will, take a look at that video. But anyways, uh, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to bring you in. And I'm going to show you what I got. So here we go. Alright, so here is my new additions. Uh, for this month, I guess you could say new editions 44. It's hard to believe this is the 44th new edition video I've made but um, I'll start right here on the left Right here on the bottom. I've got a M 1943 field jacket and uh, What's really cool about this one is it's named multiple times It's got the name le laws and a serial number. It's also got in like pen. It looks like Joe Oliphant, I believe that's what it looks like. And then you got the uh, laundry number I0581. I haven't done any research on this jacket yet. Uh, no patches or anything. No other markings that I saw. But overall, it's in really good shape. And um, it was a good addition to the collection. Don't mind the Dr. Pepper bottle on there. Um, I actually, there's a man named Mr. Norman. And I'm sure you're watching this video, Mr. Norman. And you know how much I greatly appreciate you. Uh, this man, I've bought several things uh, from him from time to time over the past year or so. And uh, he's very uh, fair with his prices and stuff. And he's always excited, you know, uh, when items from his collection can be sent to, you know, someone like me. Uh, a collector who will appreciate the items and give them a good home. And so again, thank you Mr. Norman. But this jacket's from him, so thank you again. Next, I've got this uh, dress jacket. It's a World War II dress jacket. I got this one on eBay. Shipping and everything it was $21. See, it's got the 2nd Infantry Division patch here on the left shoulder. That's really cool. I don't have one of those yet, so or I didn't have one before. Um, it's actually named as well. Uh, you got J. Wilson, and then in like marker or Sharpie, you got a W, looks like 9900 laundry number. Overall, the jacket's in good shape, except I didn't realize this when I bought it till I got it, uh, you know, in the mail. All of the buttons are safety pinned on, or some other rigged up thing there, but luckily my wife loves to sew. And so many times over the years, she's sewn buttons back on for me and everything else. She has the thread to do it, and so I'll sweet talk her into doing that for me. Might, you know, do something nice for her or whatever, I don't know, but she'll do it for me. But anyways, um... This jacket, I know it's dated. It's dated 1942. It's in it's in the pocket, but anyway, it's great jacket. $21. I'm so happy to have added it, especially a named one. Good stuff. This next uh, item here, I got a navy topper, and uh, it's got the patch here for um, quartermaster. I had to look it up. You know, I, I love collecting these navy toppers or jumpers because of you know the different patches. There's so many. Different patches for rank and, and different, you know, roles they played on the ship and, and in the Navy in general. It's really cool collecting those. Another thing that's really cool is, check this out, USS Juno. So, some of you might know, some of you might not, but the Juno was somewhat um, uh, from well known, I guess, because unfortunately it was sunk in uh, 1942. Um, that was really sad, you know, and everything. Uh, something else that kind of makes it a well-known ship is the five Sullivan brothers. They're, uh, you know, five brothers on the same ship, the USS Juneau. And they all, unfortunately, uh, you know, perished on, when the ship was 
torpedoed and sunk by uh, the Japanese. But there's actually a movie called The Fighting Sullivans. Uh, I've got the movie, seen it multiple times. It's a really good movie. Definitely tugs at the heartstrings. But um, USS you know, so that's definitely interesting. It is named also. I'm doing pretty good with the name stuff right now. The only thing is I can't make out what it says. Looks like Oliva, something Oliva, and it's got a number. Unfortunately, the ink's faded, but... It looks like O-L-I-V-A, Oliva, something. But anyways, really nice uh, uh, jumper here. I got it actually from a Facebook uh, marketplace, uh, shipping and everything for $25. So I think that was more than fair. I'm grateful for that. Uh, right here at the top, another thing from Mr. Norman. He sent me this. I wasn't expecting it, um, but I appreciate it a lot. This is one of my favorite war movies, John Wayne, Sands of Iwo Jima. Great movie. Uh, I'll definitely have to get a frame for this and hang it up in my man cave. So thank you, Mr. Norman, for that. Right under here, I went to an antique store, and I got this. It's actually World War II dated uh, mess tray or serving tray, food tray. And it's actually dated right back here. I'll try to get the lighting just right for you. See, 1943 SM Coast. That's Southeastern Metals Company, 1943. Got that for six dollars, which I think is you know a good price. I'm grateful for that. Right here, most of you guys watch me know I like going to the Goodwill bookstore. I found a lot of good books over the years. This one, oh, almost threw it in the floor. Still a good book. PT 109, you know, has to do with John F. Kennedy. Um, I already have a copy of this book, but it's a newer version. What's interesting about this one is check this out. I always like to look for dates and stuff in books. Bear with me. So look. This book is dated 1961, so as you know, at the time he would have still been living because he was assassinated in November of 1963. So this is a very early copy of his book, and I got it for four dollars at the Goodwill store. So that's a really good addition to the collection. Right here, I got uh, All Quiet on the Western Front DVD. I've got the original one from 1930, but I honestly, out of all, I got 500 and something war movies. I didn't have this already. And honestly, I'd never even seen it before. This came out in 1979. Overall, not too bad. I still favor the original from 1930, but uh, John Boy Walton did pretty good. So kudos to him. Mr. Norman also sent me this. As you know, I picked up a, a Willie's Jeep. Dates around 46 or so. Um, I'm trying to be careful with it. The pages are starting to come out. But just some interesting pictures about, you know, Willie's Jeeps and everything. Sorry about the glare, but... I haven't looked over just too thoroughly yet, but I will. Another gift. Mr. Norman also sent me this original World War II newspaper. It's dated July 12th, 1943. So uh, that's really cool. I like these old newspapers and everything. to just kind of look over them and everything. So I appreciate that a lot. Went to a yard sale, and my wife actually spotted this before me. Life, picture history of World War II. And uh, again, I like to look at dates. And um, let me see. This one is dated 1950, so five years after the war. And it's you know it's a big book. It's got a, just a ton of pictures and stuff from World War II. And uh, again, I haven't spent just a whole lot of time looking through it and everything. But it's a really great book for being uh, what 70 years old. And I got it for ten dollars, which I was happy with that. Moving on right here, Mr. Norman also sent me these. National Geographic has to do a D-Day uh, from June 2002, so I appreciate that. I'm going to look over that. He also sent me, I got this Leatherneck magazine, uh, November 2003. See, it's got a Marine on there with an M1 Garand. Really nice. Also, the 100 Greatest War Movies, and right there on the cover, it's got the very best war movie ever made in history. Hands down, I know some of you are going to disagree with that, and that's okay. Favorite war movie of mine, Saving Private Ryan. Love it. Good movie. All right. Moving on here, this helmet liner has actually been in a video already. I thought I'd put it in this one. See, it's got the yellow circle on the front. Now, you know, uh, I've always been told and said it's specific Corman uh, helmet, but it could also be a Shore Party or Shore Patrol Shore Party. It's kind of, you know, different, you know, back and forth between collectors. Uh, and um, so it could be, you know, a Pacific Corman helmet or, like I said, Shore Party, Shore Patrol. But either way, 
It's really cool. It's my first liner marked like this. I do have four helmets. But uh, it is a World War II liner. And it was made by Mine Safety Appliance, upside down. And um, I was really grateful to get this. You know, I always like World War II liners and everything. Because I'd like to have each one of my World War II helmets to have a liner. But I got this for uh, $76. Might seem like a lot, but, uh, you know, I was more than happy to pay that. I was grateful for the price, so it worked out. I shipped it and everything. What's interesting is this is a cut-down liner, like a child's toy, maybe like a defective one. See, it's not as as uh, as tall, I guess, or deep as a, a regular liner. See how the uh, the back nape area, uh, how it, you know, um, comes near the rim of the liner. But anyways, that's pretty cool. So I was on vacation recently in Alabama, and a co-worker of mine sent me pictures of this. She went to an antique store, saw it, and I thought I might be interested in it. I couldn't wait to get back in town and go to that antique store. And I couldn't tell just a whole lot about the helmet itself, but when she showed me a picture of the liner, and it was World War II. Uh, sweatband has been replaced post-war. But this is actually a Korean War M1. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but anyways, it's got an M and a dash. I can't remember if it was 121 or A or something. But So it's a McCord made uh, around the early 1950s. It's been painted probably multiple times. See the brush strokes and everything. Thought about doing a paint remove on this to see what might be under there. Uh, the liner is also a mine safety appliance. You can see that up in there. So that's two of them. Uh, it has been painted black. You see it's got lightning bolts on there. So I'm kind of curious to see what might be under there. But I got this for $26 with tax. So I thought that was a good deal. It's a nice big spider right there. I added him to my collection too. All right, went to another antique store on my road trip, picked up this flashlight. Honestly, guys, I'm not really up on flashlights. Don't really know when this was. Is this World War II, post-World War II? Some of you guys can probably tell me right off the bat, so please comment. I didn't see that there, 17113. I have no idea what that is, but overall, really nice flashlight, and uh, I guess that's a model number. But I got it for, I think it was $6.00. Look, here's my notes from my video. I always prepare. But um, great flashlight there. Something that, you know I didn't already have. So I was grateful for that. Right here, I went to an estate sale about a month ago. And um, it had already been going on for like two or three days. And I know the guy was a World War II veteran. Um, went there, you know, didn't think I'd find anything. But luckily, on a shelf in the uh, like the storage shed area, I found this canteen. Southeastern Metals Company, 1945. It had a bunch of crap and crud and, uh, like, chemical stuff stuck all over it. So I cleaned it up just a little bit. Looks a whole lot better. And uh, I only paid a dollar for this. World War II canteen for a dollar. Can't go wrong with that. Moving on here on my road trip. Stopped, again, another antique store. Got a World War II victory medal and also a um, good conduct medal. I think I got, like, ten of these now. Good conduct medal and, like, four or five victory medals. But, um... You know, it's always cool adding the medals and everything. You know, it's kind of sad that they don't stay with the family. I mean, you never know how they were separate from the family, but I, mean, I always like them when they're named and numbered, but unfortunately these aren't. Got both of them together for $16, which was cool. Good deal. Now, with this helmet I bought, I happened to stumble on this in the same booth. Looks like a Willys Jeep. Uh, pretty cool, but check this out. It's actually a pencil sharpener. So I'm not sure how old this would be. I don't know if it would be 20, 30 years old or older than that. But gave $4 for it. I was happy with that. On my road trip, again, went to an antique store. And I saw this cup. This canteen cup. I'm wanting to get all my cup, uh, canteens to have cups and covers. So I saw the price on it. See, that's the original tag that was on it. $10. I'm like, crap, you know. You know, because I'm cheap. I can't help it. You know, everybody likes a good deal, which I'm not, I don't try to get a killing or whatever. But sometimes I've, I've told you all my videos, my wife's like, just get it. Just pay a few more dollars or whatever. Just get it because I'll be talking about it for a month and she'll have to hear it and it gets on her nerves. But so what really got me to buy this thing for $10, it is a pre-1918 cup. It's not dated or marked or anything. See, it's got the rolled lip on there and the handle, the way it's set up. But... I looked on the bottom, and 
I don't know if I can do this one handed or not. Probably not. Oh, I'm wrong. Look, somebody etched the initials JB in there. It was the bottom of the B's lightly scraped or etched, but JB, and that's my initial, so that was a sign I had to buy it. So, $10 did good. All right, moving on on my road trip. Another antique store. I'm telling you, I went to like 15 antique stores. Got this. This is really cool. I don't have one. It's a cover uh, for spare barrel for a machine gun, and it's got, I guess, I don't know what that was, B231 or something, but... This is really cool. Never seen one before in person, but had to have it. It was $15. Grateful for that. Really cool. Really interesting item. Another antique store. I saw this bandolier in a glass display case and asked to see it. And a tax and everything was right at $8. I had it marked 7 but you know, plus tax. And it's actually for uh, M1 carbine. 10 round clips. It has what it holds. And I opened it up and there's, I think, what three there's three actual clips with uh some shell casings on there and they're dated 1954 now uh i believe this is going to be around korean war because i was kind of looking into the bandoliers and i don't think they had these for m1 carbines uh towards the end of world war ii i might be wrong on that i got a lot on my mind right now i'm kind of tired but so i think this could be just after world war ii this bandolier or maybe towards the end but anyways <laughs> Moving on, antique store. Got this right here. I was on the fence again about this. This canteen cover came with this canteen, but you see the cover's been chewed up by a rat. No doubt about it, chewed up. But um, it is World War II. It's either 1943 or 1945. But the canteen I was pretty pumped about because PP Inc., I don't have this maker of this canteen. Believe it or not, out of all of my canteens, uh, I think I've got like 81 or 82 canteens or something. I don't have this company. So this filled a hole in my collection. It's a uh, it's a maker you don't see a lot of, dated 1943. So um, I got this canteen and cover for 16 bucks. The same antique store, I got this cover here for $5. Uh, the uh, snap right there is actually connected, so I'll have to work with it. But uh, late World War II cover, uh, it's dated 1945, it's hard to see, but it's there. Mr. Norman also sent me these utensils, which is awesome. And see, look, they're marked USMC. If I can get you to see it. Sorry, lighting. So, United States Marine Corps. Bear with me. Well, anyways, it's there. Maybe it'll cooperate in a minute. So we got the fork. And then also have the knife. You see that? Not work with me today. And then the spoon. Now the spoon is not marked USMC. It actually says National Stainless and then US. So a really, really cool. Honestly, I don't have just a whole lot of Marine Corps stuff. But he sent me that as a gift. I appreciate that. And lastly, I know this is a lengthy video. Thank you guys are still with me. Uh, also purchased these from Mr. Norman. Got another pair of double buckle combat boots. This makes five pairs of these in my collection. I love these things. I just love the way they look. They're, they're really awesome. Really, really awesome. Um, and I like, you know, how they have the worn look. They've definitely been used and everything. Really, really cool. Uh, on the bottom here, so you got the Goodyear uh, soles on them and bottoms on them. So really, really cool. Um, grateful to be able to add these to the collection. I didn't see a name or anything in there, but um, still really awesome to own these. They display really well. And uh, lastly, I've got these right here, which these are really, really cool. I've got one pair already. These are, you know, boondockers. I think some people call them, or they're called rough outs. But um, check this out. They're marked USN, uh, and then JF McElwang. L. Wayne Company, I guess, United States Navy. Uh, Marines, I believe, would have wore this as well, if I'm not mistaken, pretty sure. Got Barefoot, and, um, let's see, Knife Flex. Some of you guys probably already know exactly what these are. I'm not too good on these, uh, these, uh, combat shoes or boots, boondockers or, um, rough outs, but anyways, both of them match as far as, you know, information on the bottom. 
grateful for that, Mr. Norman. Uh, but anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up. I hope you like it. I know it's another lengthy one, so again, I appreciate you guys that are still with me. But um, please continue to like my video, share, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. And uh, more videos are on the way. So thank you, guys.